Newsflash, this is your last chance to buy Cardano under 40 cents. This is it, and it's not going to happen again. Last time it's going to be here. Uh, if you're kicking yourself in the butt for missing Bitcoin at $3,000 back when it uh, had the COVID crash of 2020, uh, or maybe you're in uh, postpartum depression because you missed out on Ethereum at 100 bucks 2019. Well, it was just a year ago. You had Solana at $10 post the FTX crash. And well, that's all due to fear and playing on your emotions. And well, there's a lot of fear in Cardano right now. Uh, you know, everyone's talking about that it's a ghost chain, it's dead. Uh, well, you know what? There's put that all to bed because Cardano is here. They're building, they're thriving. There's a Chang hard fork that is that is happening this week. And so we're hyper bullish on Cardano. We also think that it's extremely undervalued at 40 cents. It's uh, an absolute steal. We're going to break down why we think that. Just very simple historical uh, uh, charts that say, hey, you know what? Prior to the bull run, we've seen an absolute explosion of Cardano. And I think that this is no exception. And we are in the early stages of a bull mark and extremely undervalued. Uh, now, uh, the haters are always saying no one's building on Cardano. It's a ghost chain. Well, it's time to wake up. The work has been done. The partnerships are here. The, the chain's not broken. What exactly is there to fear? I, I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with Charles Hoskinson being hyper polarizing. Maybe it's just the fact that retail, which was so invested in Cardano, has exited and they haven't really come back yet. It's just more institution and ETF money floating around. But retail is coming back in, so I think this is a perfect stage in the market to get exposure to Cardano, and not to mention it's a top 10 token, and it was at one point a top three token, but you know, looking at the chain, I can't spot the flaws. The project is sound. Uh, so this is why I made this video, is to explain to you why, well, there's this big hate on Cardano, and well, the evidence just isn't there. The developers are, and there is a major milestone, something absolutely huge is happening, and it's it's called decentralization, and that's in the form of the Chang Hard Fork, which ushers in the new Voltaire era. Uh, I'm going to get into how the Chang Hard Fork works, but uh, first I wanted to address this whole uh, nobody's building on Cardano. Let's put that to bed. Uh, well... Why Why is this insignificant? Well, how about a billion dollars? Well, what does a billion dollars have to do with anything? Well, that's how much money they have locked up in treasury that is going to be the ammunition or the fuel for the community to drive the next stage of Cardano's development through decentralization. Uh, what does all this mean? Okay, so Cardano's got a treasury. 1.5 billion ADA tokens are locked up. Uh, now, current valuation of 1.5 billion in ADA tokens, you simply do the math, it's about $600 million. Uh, it was only a few months ago, though, uh, this, this amount of tokens was worth a billion dollars. And, you know, this is going to be money that they're going to be using for developer grants, marketing, uh, partnerships, education, workshops. It's basically just the fuel to promote and expand its current reach tenfold. Uh, so today, maybe it's $600 million in treasury. By the end of the year with token uh, accruing value, I'm thinking 2 to $3 billion is probably pretty realistic. So that is a crazy amount of money that we can use uh, as the Cardano community to build this whole ecosystem out. Uh, so real quick, how are they rolling out this chain hard fork? Well, uh, the in in uh, upgrade pass or hard fork pass, they've used a hard fork combinator. Basically, they just need 70% of the nodes and validators to upgrade to the new version of the software, uh, which is vastly different what you see from other blockchains uh, where they have a V2. A V2 is just basically say, hey, ditch the old chain. We'll give you tokens in the similar amount for the new chain. Or, you know, we've seen other chains just straight up power down the network and then boot it back up. Uh, so for here, uh, it's it's a seamless uh, integration. We go from old to new. They weren't they run congruently for a short period of time until they're 100% uh, nodes and validators uh, running the new software. So what what happens after the Chang Hard Fork? Well, we usher in the Voltaire era. Uh, so Voltaire era. 
This is bringing in decentralization. It focuses on decentralizing Cardano's governance by introducing a community-run governance model. So up until now, the decisions and the roadmap and kind of the direction of Cardano has been spearheaded by the Cardano Foundation and also IOHK. This introduces, you know, with the Voltaire era, basically a decentralized government for Cardano, kind of like a nation state. So uh, you got elected officials that make decisions. Not too far different from a DAO, but way more expansive. So a DAO just simply elected officials, and then you also got uh, some voting power. Here, you, you have an entire government. It sounds crazy to say government when you're talking about blockchain, but that's essentially what it is, is that you're going to have voting power, elected officials. There's also... A constitution. There's some. Uh, so there's some roles that they're 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 issuing out called uh, delegate representatives, or we just call them D reps, or that's what they're calling them on Twitter. So they're elected ADA hold. They're they're elected by the ADA holders, and they'll represent the community interests and governance proposals and actions. So everything moving forward now is done by the community and not by the foundation or or IOHK. So. Um, if you're a fan of decentralization, if you look to say, why was Bitcoin so successful? And I, I think that the biggest argument is that it's decentralization. No one's in control and that it's it's a self-governing ecosystem, right? And the, the Bitcoin miners are the ones that decide if it's ever going to have any changes. Now they're stubborn. They don't like to make any changes. But uh, here, uh, very similar kind of thesis. You have decentralization. You have this, this community-run project. And, and I would say that is why. Bitcoin is so successful, and so now here uh, you're you're seeing the same thing, uh, or at least the decentralized side. You're seeing very similar narrative coming to Cardano. Uh, they did have a constitutional committee down at Buenos Aires, uh, where the community elected representatives composed the of uh, uh, the the constitution. And so I have here uh, the actual uh, constitution has been drafted here. Uh, it still needs to be voted on, but uh, you have here the the constitution. So uh, I won't I won't go into depth of this. This is pretty uh, pretty long and uh, lengthy here, but uh, it's here, it's there. It's not just a thesis. Uh, and then uh, now, uh, what we want to talk a little bit about, like the price action and, and you know where we're at. So we're under forty cents. I think this is the last time you're going to get there. But what what's the strongest asset of Cardano when you when you're trying to figure out like where's a project going as far as price? Uh, you got to identify like what, what is the strongest thing about it? And for us, when it comes to price and markets, this is a community, man. And, and that's what we were saying earlier. The retail kind of left uh, when the market crashed in 2022. And well, we're starting to ramp back up. And, you know, one project that has fallen a little behind the competition as far as the layer ones was Cardano slipping from historically, which was the number three on the market cap uh, at one point, only behind Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, now they are down to the number 10. So uh, let's take a look at, at the Cardano chart here. Uh, so you can see here 38 cents. Uh, if you go back on the uh, on the one month, you can see. At one point, it was almost at 50 cents. Uh, and you look at the one year here, it was at uh, 28 cents uh, not too long ago uh, or a year ago. So you know what? It hasn't really had the growth uh, that the other altcoins have, or even compared to Bitcoin, it is it is not per performing well over the last 12 months. And, you know, if you, if you think about like, uh, as far as cycles go. So last bull market, you know, you had Cardano go from in 2017 uh, from pennies uh, post uh, post its inception to 2018 to a dollar 17. So uh, from a dollar 17 was the height of the 2018 or 2017 bull market. Uh, and last bull market in 2020 uh, or 2021, we saw a $3 Cardano briefly. And we saw Cardano run from, sub five cents up to three dollars and i mean look at a historical snapshot here uh it was just in january of 2021 we saw cardano move from 35 cents which is right where we're at right now it run up to three dollars a, a solid 10x here and so i think that we're in a very similar position right now when it comes to where where Cardano is in the cycle, I think that uh, I I'm forecasting five to eight dollars this bull market, and 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 I just kind of going. I won't go too far into charts. 
I'm not the big chart guy here. I just go off of like historical macro data. And you know what? First bull market, a dollar. Second one, three dollars. Do the math. It hasn't slowed down and it's growing. And those those mark those marks that we hit that dollar and that three dollar were no smart contract functionality. And now we have a higher throughput, faster transaction. People are building. You have the decentralization coming around the corner. Uh, and well, I'm thinking five to eight dollars. I think is somewhere that we, we can expect Cardano to land. And so at 30 cents, and we're talking about a, a 10x, I think it will regain some of that market cap position against the competition. Will we see Cardano back in the top five? I think so. But, you know, you got to ask yourself, like, how, how exactly did we get here? Um, you know, not, you know, how did it fall from uh, against the competition? Well, there was no shortage of FUD. You know, obviously, ghost chain, nobody's building. But SEC also kind of uh, had Cardano in the crosshairs. Uh, so the SEC here, uh, we had a headline, uh, well, Binance had a lawsuit from SEC and in the lawsuit, they had listed several cryptocurrencies that Binance was offering and said, those are securities. And Cardano was one of the, of the uh, projects listed there. Uh, we saw an immediate dip on the price on this, but what didn't happen was any follow-up as far as Wells notice or lawsuits towards Cardano. So uh, yes, SEC mentioned Cardano in this lawsuit, but there was no lawsuits that actually went after Cardano or the uh, ADA ecosystem at all. And so that kind of has come and gone and time has passed. We're starting to think that the SEC is going to leave Cardano alone. Um, and, you know, so things are turning, you know, we, we went from an, uh, we went from uh, no one's building and the SEC's attacking and now things are looking up. And so you, you have the decentralization and, you know, and just to, just to, just to put the resiliency on, on the spotlight here, when it comes to Cardano, uh, just yesterday, uh, you had a DDoS attack uh, towards Cardano. So if you're not familiar with DDoS attack, basically you have uh, someone on the network just spamming spamming cardano trying to bring down the network through high high congestion and uh and well that didn't work and, and the funny thing was is they actually ended up funding the network's improvement and uh took value from the attacker cardano network did so uh hats off to you thank you for contributing to the uh, cardano network network it shows just the resilience of cardano that hey other DDoS attacks might take down some of the competitors uh, because they are not well suited for these these style attacks. Well, Cardano, uh, well, still up. Uh, had a very small amount of uh, congestion, but no no downfalls of the network. So hats off to you. Now, uh, I did want to I did want to say that you know the market cap currently of Cardano is at thirteen billion dollars. And I think that it is grossly mispriced. I think that with the retail coming in, we uh, we saw a previous all-time high of $94 billion uh, on market cap. Uh, I think that with the Bitcoin ecosystem, uh, Bitcoin ETFs and the uh, the Ethereum ETFs launching, we're starting to see tons of new capital come in. It's going to bring a lot of buzz to crypto. And when retail comes in, I, I, I think that they're going to uh, take a look at Cardano. I think that 80 cents on Cardano is something to expect post hard fork. I think that there's multiple reasons that we're going to get to about 80 cents, a nice 2x. Uh, well, they have the nation state adoption. We saw last bull market Cardano go all in on Africa and uh, they partnered with Kenya's education department and other, they had the world mobile down there as well in Africa, but uh, it's been a shifter focus or at least development in South America. Charles Hoskinson has talked with some people in El Salvador and I didn't get any details on, on what exactly that meant, but uh, he has been in talks with El Salvador He's been talking with Argentina and Argentina. Well, uh, they did uh, ink some some paperwork, some deals, some partnerships. And so now they are working with the Argentinian government. Uh, and, you know, who's next? Maybe Venezuela, some other countries. And so this is what you can expect from Cardano is partnerships with nation states. And basically 
these these deals that they've been making, I think, are going to be spearheaded now by the community or funded by the community. And I think that this decentralization is really going to speak to a lot of nations. Of, instead of having an American-based company or a Hong Kong-based company uh, controlling the direction, you can go to another country and say, hey, look, man, uh, we, we, we're hands off here. This is a decentralized program. You know, you guys have at it as, as you wish. So uh, with that said, uh, pretty bullish here on the, the hard fork. We're expecting it to roll out this week and we're expecting some price action to follow with the news as well. Uh, with that said, uh, come back and check out our live show. And if you liked today's video, do us a favor, like, subscribe. Uh, it helps us out tremendously. The live show is at 2 p.m. Eastern time, 11 Pacific. Come say hello in one of our live shows. Until the next time, peace.